of God today. And I want to remind you, especially if you're new to the Fit Church, it's your first time, it's not a reminder, but a proclamation that everything that I preach, I'm always preaching to myself first because I feel that I'm in the most need, you know, that, um, you know, I've had my ups and downs just like everyone else. I've, I've stumbled, I've fallen, I have made mistakes and I need to learn just as much as everyone else. So what I do, what I practice doing is I like to go to the Lord and say, Lord, well, first of all, I humble myself to you and I wanna ask you to speak through me today. Teach me your ways. I wanna learn, I wanna grow and I want your people to grow alongside me. So that's my prayer for us all to grow together to reach our greatest potential in Christ. Amen. So today the title of the message is expanding your reach. Now today in, in the, the, the world of marketing and social media, everybody wants to expand their reach. Right? Like, I want to I want to get bigger. I want to have more followers. I want to have more subscribers. I want more people to see my stuff. Right. So God has given us the great commission that we're supposed to follow. And that's found in Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20. It says, Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Hallelujah. So, just the two is fine. Okay? So, we see here three simple commands. Number one, it says here to make disciples. So, what does that mean? To get people saved. That's our job. God has called us to, like, lead people to the Lord. And then, and, and instruct them on how, how to be saved. And then number two, we see here in this verse that we need to get them baptized, immersed in water. And number three, we see here in this scripture, it says to teach them to obey. In other words, to do what God's word says to do. So first of all, if you're a Christian, that is, that is like your main focus right there. That should be your main focus as a Christian. If you have the Lord living in you, it says, now God says, I want you now as a Christian to go and make other Christians. So you're going to teach them how to be saved. You're going to get them baptized. And then you're going to teach them to obey the word of God. Okay. So as that happens, we expand the kingdom of God. But you may say, well, wait, 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 wait a minute now. I'm afraid to go make disciples. I'm afraid to step out. I don't know how to share my faith. So I'm going to give you some simple steps today, first of all, on how to share your faith, okay? People need to know and realize first that they're a sinner in need of forgiveness. They, they need a Savior. If you don't realize that, man, I've, I was born into sin, I'm not perfect, I have sin in my life, and I need to be washed clean, I need to be forgiven so that God can accept me into his kingdom, if you don't realize that, you're not going to go to God. You're not going to feel like you need him really for anything, okay? Because you're going to have that deception that, hey, I believe God exists. I live in America. You know, I'm a Christian. I'm going to go to heaven. And then a lot of people will end up in hell with that mindset. So first of all, people need to know and realize that they're a sinner. So if you're sharing your faith with somebody, expanding your territory and building the kingdom of God, you need to help them to realize that they have been born in sin. So a lot of people will say some, ask questions. For example, have you ever told a lie before? Most people have. So they're going to say, yes, I've told a lie before. What does that make you? A liar. Have you ever stolen anything? A pencil or a piece of gum or anything? Uh, I think I have. And okay, what does that make you? A thief. Have you ever looked in, with lust at somebody before? The Bible says... If you look at somebody with lust, you've committed adultery in your heart. You're like, yeah, I think I've done that. So you're, you're breaking these commandments of the Lord, which proves that you are a sinner. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We all have. 
So after they recognize, yeah, man, if, if, if I die today based on those 10 commandments without a covering for my sin, where would you go? They, you know, they're going to, they're going to go to hell. Right. And so number two is they need to know that there is a heaven again, a hell to shun and that they are not for, if they are not forgiven, they're not going to make heaven their home. We have to be forgiven. So if you go to court, you've done some, some crime, you've committed a crime and you, you go to the judge and, and you just say, you know, will you forgive me? And that's your request. There's really not going to be a chance for you to escape hell. If you go, if you kill somebody, you're going to pay the price for that murder, right? Or if you got a, a speeding ticket, you know, you're doing 100 miles an hour on a 50 mile, you know, an hour lane, you're going to get fined. And if it's too fast, you might end up in prison, right? Well, if someone were to come and pay your fine for you, what do we call that? They pay your bail. They'll help you to escape the punishment of that crime, right? So Jesus came and he paid our price. He paid the fee, the fine that we're supposed to pay for our sins. He paid it for us and he could do that because he's a perfect man without sin, and the Messiah, and therefore we can have forgiveness and escape that punishment. So they need to realize that. Number three, they need to know that Jesus is the Messiah, that he is the one that paid the price for their sins, and therefore they can be forgiven if they believe, they repent, and confess that Jesus is Lord. Okay? Do you think somebody that committed a crime, is sitting in jail, is going to have somebody come and pay their fine if that person has no remorse, you know? If they have no remorse, no, I'm glad I hurt that person. I'm glad I robbed that banker. I'm glad I did this or that. No, they need to stay in jail. But if they have remorse and they repent, man, I'm so sorry for what I did. Can you please help me get out of this prison? then maybe somebody's more likely to help them. See, we have to have remorse when we do something wrong. We sin. We got to say, God, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I accept Jesus Christ and his sacrifice so that I can be forgiven. And then next we need to be, they need to be water baptized, okay? And receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit and power. So these are some very basic things. If you want to expand the kingdom of God, you need to let people know Help them realize that they're a sinner. They're in need of forgiveness. They need to understand that there's a heaven to gain, a hell to shun. We're going one place or the other when we die and we're not promised our next breath. So we need to be forgiven. They need to know that Jesus is the Messiah, paid the price for their sins so that there's an opportunity for forgiveness and to escape that punishment and that they need to believe and repent and confess Jesus as Lord. They need to be water baptized and receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit and power. So if you can just remember those few things right there, it's so easy to go and share your faith with somebody and let them know, hey, your house is on fire and I'm trying to help you escape that eternal punishment, you know. Proverbs 28, 1. We're going to talk about boldness because so recently um, I'm going to give a shout out actually uh, David Mapalo on uh, on he's got a YouTube great YouTube channel and all other social medias and this young man ever since he was like 16 years old he's out there preaching the gospel and his videos as a young man inspired me like man we need to get out and preach more and so brother if you're watching man God bless you man you're awesome and uh, so that's why I, I I sent some support to him I want him to be uh, uh, blessed financially so that God can take him and use him and, and expand the kingdom of God. And so this verse, Proverbs 28, 1 says, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. And 
And that's what I think about when I think of Brother Mapalos. He's bold as a lion, just gets out there. I mean, he was on an airplane while everybody's walking down the aisle to get off the airplane. He's just standing there on the side, preaching the gospel to everybody. And, and, and that's the real deal to me. You know, when somebody steps out and does the John the Baptist, you know, tight style of evangelism. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is near, you know. I love it. So, do you want to know how to be bold? Because the Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. All right, so stick with me. Because whether, most importantly, is for the gospel. Boldness for the gospel is the most important because we can't take anything to heaven with us except for other people. So going out and sharing your faith with other people is so super important. And God will bless you if you just step out in faith and start doing it with that boldness. But let's talk about how to be bold. First of all, you need to be righteous. Righteousness will help you to be bold. Because if you know that you're living right, it's so much easier to go and preach the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus, right? You don't feel convicted inside like, like you know, some preachers won't get up and preach a message on a certain topic because they're not doing good in that area, so they're not comfortable preaching on it. So if you are living righteous and holy, separated for God's work, you're going to be absolutely able to be bold, step out. So if you're living in sin, then of course, you're not going to have the confidence to speak boldly about Jesus. You have to be willing to step out and be like that lion. Rawr, just be bold. And if you're saved, if you're forgiven, you're born again, filled with faith and filled with the Holy Ghost, then you should absolutely be bold. you got everything you need inside, the Word of God inside, the Holy Spirit inside to help you to be bold. There's no reason not to be. Amen? And if you walk in fear and worry about what other people think of you, then you're really not operating in faith, right? If we're like, man, I, I don't know. If I go out there and share this person, share Jesus with this person and they reject me or they feel like I'm bothering them, would you rather bother somebody and they end up in heaven or leave them alone and they end up in hell, you know? Hallelujah. So we have to be operating in faith by stepping out. Faith without action is dead. Now, I want to read 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 2. It says, They think our motives for what we do are like those of the world. I plan to be very bold against those people when I come. I hope I will not need to use that same boldness with you. He's talking, you know, to the other disciples. So, um, he says, I plan to be very bold against those people when I come. Now, I want you to recognize something. You see, we need to plan to be bold. Did you see what that says? He says, I plan to be very bold against those people when I come. So if you already have intentions before you step out, right? You build yourself up on your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. And you step out. And, and, and with that plan in place, it's going to be so much easier to be bold. Go out expecting to be bold. Say a prayer of faith and go out into the highways and byways and compel people to come to the Lord with the boldness of a lion. Hallelujah. Now, Philippians chapter 1, verse 14 says, And also most of the brethren have derived fresh confidence in the Lord because of my chains and are much more bold to speak and publish fearlessly the word of God, acting with more freedom and indifference to the consequences. They grew more confident because of his jail time. Now, do I need to be put in jail? Does the pastor need to be put in jail? for the gospel in order for you to be confident in the Lord and be bold in the gospel? <laughs> I hope not, you know, but sometimes something radical has to happen for people to step up and uh, step out in faith and be bold. You, you see all the, the protesters and in different countries when something happens in the government, they have these big rallies and they protest People that have never stood up for anything before, they feel this burning on the inside. Man, I got to go stand up and protest against this. Excuse me. <coughs> so, 
So we have to have that mindset that we're willing to step out and be bold and let the Lord use us. You need to know that you are free and that in America, we have the freedom of speech to proclaim the gospel. We need to take advantage of this, this right that we have that many people don't enjoy in those communistic, satanic countries. Can you imagine? Can you imagine living like in uh, North Korea or uh, what's another country? Communist country? Iran? Think about that. Can you imagine living in Iran where they're killing Christians? I, I've, I've watched, I've seen an article before where they, they dug a hole and they put a Christian in this hole up to his head in dirt. And they just kept stoning him to death, throwing rocks at his head till he died. So be thankful for the freedom that we have here in America to, sh America to share our faith, our faith and take advantage of that. Hallelujah. And we need to not only be as bold and confident as a lion, but we need to stand up with mega faith you know, in the face of opposition. That takes faith. When people are opposing you, to step up and say, I'm a child of Almighty God. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. You know, do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? That takes bold faith. A lot of people are walking in fear, false evidence appearing real, and it's holding them back. And the Bible says God is not giving you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So, just know that if you're operating in a spirit of fear, that's not from God. You're not operating by the power of God, the spirit of God. But if you're operating with power, if you're operating with love, a sound, disciplined mind, yes, that's a spirit from God. Hallelujah. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 2 says, We had previously suffered and been treated outrageously in Philippi, as you know, but with the help of our God, we dared to tell you his gospel in the face of strong opposition. Hallelujah. You know, if the disciples of Jesus that were pretty goofed up, I mean, they had lots of problems. If they can step forward and proclaim the gospel boldly, you and I can step out and proclaim the gospel boldly. Let's help save people's souls and expand the kingdom of God because like I said, we can't take anything to heaven with us except for other people. And if listen to this, if we truly love our neighbor, the Bible says love your neighbor as yourself. If we truly love our neighbor as ourself, you know, which is a very important command, then we're going to share the gospel with them, even under strong opposition. I mean, because if you love somebody, you're going to want to save their soul. I mean, think in the natural realm we do that. Like I said, if somebody's in a burning house and you're walking down the street, let's say it's your friend, you're walking down the street and you see your friend's house is on fire and you know your friend just texted you, oh, I'm going to take a nap now. My parents aren't home, you know, and, and, and they're in that house and you see that it caught on fire. It's not like falling down, but you see it's on fire. Are you just going to like, uh eh, She'll be all right. She'll feel the heat and get out. Are you going to go in there and you're going to yell and try to find them, wake them up, get them out quickly and save their life? If you love somebody, you'll do that. Yet, we walk by people every day. You walk by people at school. You guys walk by people at work. They don't have Jesus and you never say anything to them about the Lord. They're in a house that's on fire and you don't even care that they're going to hell. See, the devil has, has like gotten a hold of your tongue and gotten a hold of you inside with fear and you need to be delivered of that fear and step out and help people receive salvation. Hallelujah. Remember, we don't fear what man can do unto, to us. We fear and love and serve our God. So think about that. Have you really been loving your neighbor? You say you love your friend. Do you really love your friends? The Bible says we're supposed to love our enemies. Have you been loving your enemies? You've been praying for them? You've been speaking the word of God to them? I think we deceive ourselves too often 
and think that we believe something that we really don't believe. You believe you love them, but you don't love them if you're not really helping them to know the Lord. And I bet most Christians believe that they love their neighbor and probably believe that they love enemies, their enemies. But are they really? Because if they're not alerting them that they're asleep in a burning house, you try to save them, do you really think they love them? Do we really even love our family members that are not saved if we don't share the gospel of salvation with them? Well, they won't listen to me, you know, they're tired of me. I'm the, I'm the Jesus freak, you know, and they don't want to hear me. You know, first of all, you can show the love of Jesus with your lifestyle, with your attitude, with your kindness, with your love. And they're going to be like, man, there's something different about you. And then give your testimony. You don't always just have to preach at somebody. You can give them your testimony. Man, I once was lost. God just reached down the pits of hell, pulled me out, saved me. I, had, I was, you know, living a life of sin, doing these wrong things. And God changed my heart, you know. I, I got filled with the Holy Ghost, you know. Whatever your testimony is and that can encourage somebody when you share that with them they're going to be encouraged and that's either a seed planted or you're watering a seed that will grow and god will bring forth the harvest hallelujah <clears throat> so we need to love god more and we need to learn to love others as well so i'm so so glad that the lady that led me to the lord was obedient to the Holy Spirit and bold as a lion because she evangelized to me right out in public while I was working. I was working my job. She walked up to me. She shared the gospel with me. She invited me to church the next day. I went to church, got saved, changed my life forever. Hallelujah. So how many people are you going to see in heaven that are there because of you? Man, that's a good question. Listen to this again. When you die and you go to heaven, how many people are going to be there because of you? Wow. Wouldn't that be cool if all these people started running up to you like, thank you. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you so much for sharing the gospel with me so I can make heaven my home and not spend eternity in hell. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Man, instead of standing there just because you got saved, looking around everybody's running to all the other people that led them to the lord and you stand there all alone i didn't lead anybody to the lord nobody's here because of me that's a sad thing at least you made it praise god for the person that led you to the lord and for your obedience to the lord after you got saved hallelujah but bring some folks with you have a party in heaven, you know, come together. When that rapture comes and we all go up and meet with the Lord, I want to look and say, hey, good to see you again. Hey, good to see you again. Oh, my goodness, praise the Lord. Look at all these people that the Lord had me by his spirit lead to salvation. Hallelujah. So how many people are you going to see in heaven that are there because of you? And how many people will end up in hell because we were not bold enough and loving enough to share with them how to get saved? Wow. I know that's an emotional question, you know, if you really care about people. But we, these questions are very serious. These are wake-up questions. How many people will end up in hell because we weren't bold enough and loving enough to share with them how to get saved? God forbid you end up in hell and say, hey, look at, hey, look at who there, who else is here? Yeah, these are all these other people you know, I hung out with. God forbid you like meet somebody in hell and they say, hey, you led me here. You weren't a good example. <laughs> so God's word tells us how to expand our reach in the kingdom of God expand the kingdom of God number one again go and make disciples number two get them baptized number three teach them to obey the word of God
It's really that simple. One, two, and three. Make disciples, get them baptized, teach them the word of God to obey the word. And you know, when you spend time with the Lord and you fall in love with him more, you're going to have a passion for serving him and leading others to him. You know, for those of you that have had a relationship with somebody, maybe you're married, you might be married now or whatever, and you love that person, when you truly love them, you want to give to them. You want to serve them. You want to help them. You want to be a blessing to them. And that makes them feel your love. I feel sorry for those that are in relationships. You're married, been married for 20 years, and you all never serve each other. You're just selfish. Most of those marriages end up in divorce because it's all about me, my, and I. What you can get instead of what you can give and be a blessing. So spend more time with the Lord, fall in love with him more, and you'll have a passion to serve and to lead others to him. And don't worry about offending people or being, or, or, or don't worry about having haters. Well, I don't want to offend people. I don't want people not to like me. But you know what? You already offend people. You already have haters anyway. There's people that don't like you. You know, give them a reason. Lead them to the Lord and then they'll love you, you know, maybe, you know. So it's not about whether somebody loves me or hates me. I want to be obedient to the Lord and love him and obey him. Hallelujah. So if you're going to have haters and offend people, just do it for the right cause, you know. Jesus had haters. He says if they hate me, they're going to hate you too. They persecuted me, they're going to persecute you too. We got to take up our cross daily and follow him and not worry about that. Because you know what? You're also going to have a lot of supporters. You're going to have a lot of cheerleaders, people that are behind you and are with you when you share the gospel. Brother Mapalo that I was talking about earlier, when I saw his video of him, you know, preaching to all these kids, these teenagers in, in high school, at the end he got a, like, a big hang. Everybody was clapping for him because he stood up so boldly and, and shared his faith. They didn't all throw rocks at him. The only one that, threw, that, that was a persecutor was a teacher coming out to try to like, get him to stop. And then he said like 20 people got saved that day. Like, don't be afraid. You can change people's lives by leading them to the Lord. So you may say now, well, okay, Pastor, but how do I make disciples? Go and make disciples of all nations. How do I do that? Am I supposed and am I am I supposed to be the one to disciple them? I don't know how to do that. So listen to me. Here's how you do it. Okay? You lead them to Jesus. They become his disciple. And the Holy Spirit will guide them into all truth. You don't have to take that big weight upon you as like, man. Now I got to meet with them every week and I got to teach them. Yes, if you can, as the Lord leads you, we want you to grow and do that. But the most important thing right now is go and lead them to Jesus. They'll become his disciple. And then teach them to get in the word, read the Bible and to obey his word. The Holy Spirit's going to help them, guide them. You also may say, well, should I be the one baptizing them? You said, one, two, three, go make disciples, then get them baptized, then just teach them to obey, okay? Should I be the one baptizing? So I lead them to the Lord, then I baptize them? It doesn't matter. If you're a born again Christian, then yes, you can baptize them. Or invite them to church and have the pastor baptize them. It doesn't really matter. But get them baptized. You may also say, well, how am I supposed to teach them to obey the word if I don't know the word? Well, Study the word to show yourself approved, rightly dividing the word of truth. No one knows everything about the Bible. No pastor knows everything about the Bible. No scholar knows everything about the Bible and the will of God. Just teach what you do know and let the Holy Spirit do the rest. It's that simple. You don't have to put all that pressure on yourself like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. You don't have to know what you're doing. Most people don't know what they're doing. Lead them to Jesus encourage them to get baptized, 
Encourage them to read the Bible and obey the word. That's it. Hallelujah. Let the Holy Spirit do his job. Invite them to church to sit under the teaching of the word of God so they can grow and be all that God has created them to be. So now, you have a decision to make. You ready? Number one, love the world. Disobey the Lord and the Great Commission. That's one option. Number two, love the Lord and prove it by obeying his word. He said, those who love me will obey me. You got those two options. You got to make a decision because if you're living on a fence, one leg on one side, another leg on the other side, that's not very comfortable. You got to make a choice which side you want to be on. Love the world and disobey the Lord or love the Lord and obey his word. And that'll prove your love for him. The Bible says that if you love the world, then the love of God is not within you. That's 1 John, uh, 1 John 2. And if you really love God, then you're going to obey him. Are you with me? Willful disobedience shows that you don't really love him. John 14, 15 says, he said, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. This is Jesus talking. Your Messiah, your Lord, he says, if you love me, you'll, you'll keep, obey my commandments. And also 1 John 5, 1 says, if you love me, obey my commands. Hallelujah. Now listen to this. I want this, this to stick with you. Joyful obedience comes from a heart of deep love. I'm going to say it again. Listen, please. Joyful obedience comes from a heart of deep love. If you're just obeying grudgingly, not with a willing attitude, that's not really from love. We're talking about willful obedience. With joy, joy in your heart, you're happy to serve the Lord. You're excited to obey his word. And I believe if you have joyful obedience, that comes from a heart of deep love. And a heart of deep love comes from getting to know the Lord more, falling in love with him more. We should not stress about obeying the Lord. We should rejoice. If you're stressing, stressing about obeying the Lord, you feel oppressed, that's demonic. That's the enemy. You need to be delivered of that. Have somebody pray over you and rebuke the devil over your life. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Because we should not stress about obeying it should be joyful. And we're supposed to get someone saved and then teach that person to do the same thing. And this is how we expand the kingdom. You know, like all of those, you know, multi-level marketing companies, they basically have you sign somebody up for some program. And then uh, every time you sign somebody up, you get a commission, you get paid from that. You teach them to go do the same thing to sign somebody else up, they get paid, but also you get credit for that person they signed up because you got the first person signed up. I believe it's the same thing spiritually. If I get you saved and you go get thousands of people saved, I believe God will bless me for that, not just you. So the more people you get saved and then teach them to do the same, expand the kingdom of God, I believe God's great blessings will be in your life. Hallelujah. That'll help you to expand your reach and expand the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord. Now, if you would say, well, this all sounds good, but there's only one problem. I'd love for, you know, I, I, I love what you're saying and I'd love to see the kingdom of God expanded and people's lives saved, people going to heaven. But how am I going to do that? Because I myself am not saved. Well, I got good news for you. I want to share that opportunity with you for you to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Make sure when you die, you're going to heaven. Now, a simple prayer does not save you. You have to repent, which means turn to God away from your sins and give the Lord your life. Give him your heart. Confess Jesus Christ as your Lord. and Commit to following him all the days of your life.
okay? So I want to give you that opportunity. I'm going to lead you into that through prayer. And if that's you, I just want you to repeat after me with your voice. Say, Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I know I've sinned. I ask you to forgive me. I repent. I turn from my sin. I turn to you. I accept the blood of Yeshua, your son, Jesus Christ, as a covering for my sin. I confess Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. And I commit to following you all the days of my life. Thank you for forgiving me and writing my name in the book of life, giving me eternal life through Jesus Christ. I surrender all to you. And I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. I commit to obeying your word, to study, to grow, and to share your gospel of salvation with other people to expand the kingdom of God. And I'll give you all the glory for it, for the great harvest. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Congratulations. If that's you, if you're watching online, you have given the Lord your heart. The Bible says all the angels of heaven rejoice for you. I have a party for you. Hallelujah. Now, I want to invite you to go to our Fit Ministries YouTube channel. And there's a video there about salvation. I believe it's like about 29 minutes or so long. And it's going to teach you more of the details about salvation. Go there, watch that video so you can grow in your relationship and have a good, strong foundation for the beginning of your relationship with the Lord. Now, in conclusion today, I'd like us all to join together in prayer and intercede for Miss Linda and her family. Um, Miss Linda, you see her if you watch, if you're here every week or you watch, she's one playing the guitar. And uh, her mother is in hospice and doesn't have much longer to live on this earth. But she has loved Jesus for so many years. Hallelujah. And just has been a wonderful woman of God. And I know she's going to make heaven her home. So we praise God for that. But let's join together for prayer for her family. Father, we just humble ourselves before you in the name of your son, Yeshua. Lord, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your mercy and your grace, your loving kindness. I pray, Father, you wrap your arms around Miss Linda, her siblings, and the rest of the family and friends that are emotionally affected by Miss Mary's passing. I pray, Father, that this is a wake-up call for people that do not know you as their Lord and Savior. And I pray, Father, you turn this situation around for the good, for your glory, that people will come to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. We just count it done right now. We thank you for comfort, for guidance, for wisdom upon Linda and her family. Thank you for loving her so much and accepting Miss Mary into your arms, into your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. So if you're watching online, you have a gift. There should be a link here on our Facebook page. You can go to give a donation to support the ministry so we can spread the gospel and help more people to come into the kingdom of God, to expand his kingdom. And we thank you so much for that. God bless you. Shabbat Shalom. And we'll see you again real soon. Be blessed.